Welcome back. So um, I've now entered all of my data. I've been able to take readings for the entire five minutes of the um, experiment. And so now I want to have a look at and see what this data looks like. So uh, I don't really need the YouTube video anymore. So I'm going to scroll this over here and have a look at my data. I'm just going to fill in all of my borders so everything looks pretty. So what you should be able to see is, as I said, um, I have marked in what where I stopped each one of these to ensure that I actually have as accurate as possible um, running down there and all of the calculations have happened and as we can see just looking at this data here my activity started at about 14.64 so remember that's going to be um, counts per second and it dropped down to about 3.42 by the end of the five minutes now if you go down and you click on the chart you can get a really clear idea of uh, what's happened. So as you entered your data, it's been plotted on this chart here, um, and you can see that there are, we use cross points or crosshairs to actually identify where each one of the points is. And I've also included on this um, a line of best fit, and we're using an exponential function. So what this tells us is that this can be extrapolated and we can use that number that's there that's in front of it to identify what possibly was our maximum value. So 15.08 was our maximum value. Now remember we want to find the half-life. So the half-life is represented when we um, have got half the amount that we started with. So for us to be able to find half the amount that we started with, we actually want to take that value and divide it into two. And that will tell us that we have half the activity that we had when we started. Now, I'm just going to use the fact that this is a calculator. So it equals 15.02 divided by 2. So I want to draw a line on my graph at 7.51. Now one of the first things you're going to see is 7.5 is going to be around here somewhere. If I want to try and do 7.51, it's probably going to be even more difficult. Now one of the things you'll see with this that we provided for you is we've actually created a line and left it there on that chart. And that's because for reasons only known to Excel, in this particular version of Excel, if you're on the chart window, if you then go into insert, it actually doesn't give you the option to insert a shape, but it does if you're actually in the uh, rest of the spreadsheet. So now I can insert a shape. So all I've done is actually got the shape, copied it across and put it on here so that we can use it because we're going to use this line to actually draw a line at 7.5 across and then read that value down to determine what our half-life for barium 37 is. Now another thing that you can do that will uh, make life a little bit easier is you can increase the um, increase the resolution on here so that it is a little bit easier to see that 7.5. So we want 7.5. We really want to try and get it as accurately as we can. So I'm going to bring this over here and I'm going to place it as close to 7.5 as I think I've got. And then I'm going to extend this line, making it a horizontal line until it reaches the curve. So I've placed that there and reached the curve. Now what I'm going to do is take a copy of this line, control C, or command C, sorry, and then command V. Oh, and I wonder where that went. Can't see anything about it being large. Let's just bring it back down again. There it is up there. I'll bring it down here where I can use it. And then I'm going to increase the size again. Scroll up. And I'm going to take that and place it on the line there. And then bring this down as a vertical line. And as vertical as I can. So now I've got two lines that represent where the half-life is going to be. So this 7.5 represents half of the 15.08. That's where that line would probably finish up. And our definition of half-life is that half of the activity 
the time it takes for half the activity. So I've gone half of that there. And if I go across and now I read down, I should be able to take a reading here. And again, we have to really try and estimate this as best as we can. So that's 150, 160, that's 170. It's not 165. It looks like it's a bit further over. I'm going to call that 166. So you're going to have to make that call for yourselves, just trying to do it as accurately as you can. Each one of these represents 10 on this scale. So 160, there's 170. I'm going to call that 166. So that's how you actually read your half-life from your barium um, versus activity versus time graph and then we'll use that value to actually then um, compare with known values and also compare with the scintillator tube to see if we get all a, a different result. Okay, thank you very much for watching.